and welcome to Ship of Fools, a nautical D&D actual play podcast. My name is Hannah McLean, and I am, as always, your dungeon master on this nautical adventure. Joining me today, I have Andy Latai. Finn Fisher. No, Lonnie Stevenson. Reagan Starkweather. And Taylor Wallace. Malachi Kassir. And we are back. So, let's do a little bit of a recap, and then we will dive right in. Um... Last session, the party had just teleported back to Luola, the capital of Erebrer, um, just in time to hear that Luola was imminently under attack. Um, you reconvened with your allies and were all assigned to a group under someone called General Flora, this elven Erebrer general. Um, she told you that you'd been tasked with defending one of the three sacred trees that help keep the druidic shield over the island intact. You headed over to your side of the island to protect the tree. Um, Finn promptly, uh, moved the ocean to sink a dozen ships that were heading over to assail your side of the <laughs> island. Um, the, the rest of your contingent then moved around to a different part of the island to help defend the, like, front docks, um, while the three of you sort of cleaned up the, uh, assailants that were still coming on rowboats who had not been caught in the sinking ships. Um, you handily defeated them, managing to keep your tree safe, but once that immediate battle was dealt with, you sort of looked around and realized that the rest of the battle was not going so well. There are plumes of smoke. The shield is wavering in such a way to indicate that at least one, if not both, of the other trees have been compromised. Um, fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, um, the uh, an airship came sailing out of the clouds and fired this, like, energy cannon at the Lithios fleet. Captained, of course, by the adventurer who proceeded to take to the skies with her clockwork wings um, and smile smugly down at the three of you. God, she's so dramatic. So, we will pick up from here. The adventurer's arrival has sort of turned what was a losing battle back into a uh, contentious battle. And you can see that some of Lithios's forces are starting to pull back as Erebrer's forces rally and get ready to push them back. I like to think that we turned it into a contentious battle. Certainly. Um, however, the uh, situation is not quite safe yet. Um, your allies are still kind of battling for this one stretch of the of the docks in front of the buildings of Luola. And you can see that although Lithios has started to pull back, things are definitely still dire. Um, however, rather than having you guys jump into initiative, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I think that just like running this is a straight initiative battle. There's too many moving parts. There's a lot going on. So um, instead, we're going to do this as a skill challenge. Oh, boy. So the way that this works <laughs> um, is that, that... might be worse. <laughs> it might be worse. Yes. I'm not letting you off easy. Um, we're going to do this as a skill challenge. What that means is that I'm still going to have you roll initiative, and I'm going to kind of tell you like what you see happening in front of you as you guys have come around this corner following after where the rest of your allies went. Um, you then can tell me what you're doing to sort of mitigate the situation and what skill you'd like to roll to do so. Um, your goal is to get nine successes on these skill checks before you get three failures. Um, collectively. This isn't each. This is, like, total. Ooh. If you want to use spells or abilities instead of making checks, you can do that. Just let me know, like, what you're doing. Depending on what it is, it might just be an auto success if it's a good idea and a mm. powerful spell. Or you might still need to roll to sort of, like make sure that you're doing it correctly or doing it fast yeah. enough or whatever it is. Um, does that all make sense? And also, if you, you guys do have, like, while while the adventurer's airship was sailing in, there was sort of a, a pause of a few seconds, at least for you guys. So if you want to have done any healing or cast any spells kind of in, in between the battle and the skill challenge, I will allow that. Can I, do, I, do I get to keep my rage up? 
I think rage drops because it, it okay. would have taken you guys long enough to get around the corner that there would have been a couple rounds with no attacking. Yeah, I think when I see that bitch fly off her stupid little ship, I'm gonna get myself up to at least 30, just in case. Okay. Yeah, I'll use my free cure wounds on myself. Nice. Honestly, I'm, like, doing pretty all right. Yeah, so. shut up, Finn. Yeah, shut up, Finn. I don't think I need to do anything. That's because I already helped you. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? What? As Malachi and Reagan are doing their healing magics, I see the glow, and I think, you know what? They're right. I need a little something to boost me, too. And I reach into my pocket, and I pull out a jar of supplements. <laughs> Why? I hate you. I say, I know you're not supposed to get high on your own supply, but this is an emergency. You're like, you've, uh, got, you've done this before. And I pop a few supplements from the jar. Wow, great. They don't help. Ah, I feel incredible. Honestly, amazed that you still have any left. You can really feel the multivitamins. Okay. So I am still going to have you guys roll initiative just so that we know which of the three of you is acting first. So please go ahead and do that for me. Seven. Fifteen for Nurgle. <laughs> Great. Nurgle does not get to make his own checks, but he can help one of you if you'd like. Twelve. Three. Okay. So, as the adventurer finishes making her, her little proclamation, um, and the camera, like, pans back down to you guys and to your allies still engaged in this clash with, uh, some of this unit of forces from Lithios. Um, you see a, like, and, and as, as the three of you are, like, running up, you've come around the corner from this, like, rocky outcropping that has the sacred tree on it to the area that is, like, the docks. All of these, all of Arabrare's ships um, moored here between, between the docks, some of them on fire, um, some of them kind of, like, already capsized in the water, some of them with people on them still kind of fighting for control. Um... You can also see, like, the buildings behind you, somewhat protected by the shield, which is still in place. Um, but there are all of these these battles raging along the length of the docks. And you can see General Flores' unit, including Nell, Alden, Shiloh, Malachi's moms, Railthor, Baleen, like, all of these all the people that you people. know. <laughs> um, yeah, um, kind of like the furthest east, right along the edge as you guys are coming down. Um, and you see that from... Uh, from a, a Lithiosian ship, which is like fairly close to the docks, um, a bunch of archers take aim and fire this hail of like flaming arrows scattering out toward Arabrare's forces um, and toward the area where your unit is. Um, we're going to skip Nurgle's turn. He can help wherever you want him to help Finn. Ah. <laughs> um, but that means that Reagan, you get to... Let him fight. Act first with kind of whatever you want to do to engage with the situation. Okay. Um, I think first off, I'm going to BA Rage. Great. And I will spend two more of my sorcery points to go arcane. Awesome. And can you repeat to me how far we are from our homies? Um... It's a little bit abstracted, so you are like, uh, like probably like sixty feet. But if you want to do something that requires you to be closer to them, that's fine. Okay, because ideally I would like to be within five feet. Yeah, um, you might have to like make an athletics check to get there quickly enough. But depending on whatever else you're trying to do. Sure. Considering that I have seventy foot dash, I Great. want to um, use my gift of the metallic dragon to manifest my wings to mm -hmm. uh shield whoever seems like they would be the most vulnerable to getting hit by flaming arrows uh awesome. <laughs> from that happening cool classic vulnerability <laughs> start sprinting in rage as i'm sprinting and then fucking manifest my my fake wings as opposed to my real wings Awesome. Um, go for it. Um, go ahead and make a make an athletics check to sort of get there in time. Pretty low DC because you're also using something else. Sure. Uh, it's 15 plus 7. 
perfect. Um, that counts as one success. Reagan goes running in. Um, you see that, like, you see Shiloh and Rosie kind of, like, off to one side, and they're both a little bit more, like, um, not quite as agile as some of the other fighters that you've got. Rosie. Um, and so the two of them are, are less equipped for ducking out of the way of flaming arrows. But they're already so low to the ground. <laughs> exactly, there's nowhere for them to go. That just means the arrows are going faster. <laughs> You'd think that would help, and yet it just means that it's easier for Reagan to get the wings spread out over their heads. <laughs> um, so you you kind of slide into place, and the arrows sort of uh, bounce harmlessly off your outstretched spectral um, wings. Beautiful. One success. Um, Finn, that is your turn. There are still flaming arrows falling from the sky. I would also like to kiss Rosie on her snout, yeah. and if she would like to kiss me back on my snout, that would be great. Um, she's so in battle mode right now. She's got her, like, metal teeth bared. But she does she sort of, like... She rips Reagan's nose off. <laughs> you see, she, she wags her tail um, as you bend down and kiss her. Her chainsaw head slices Reagan in half. <laughs> Um, well, uh, I think Reagan has the right idea. Uh, I look to our allies as they're about to be buffeted by a bunch of arrows, uh, and I am going to summon my tentacle in the air above them. Oh, nice. Because it can just be at any point. And I basically want it to just extend a full length and then whip around like a propeller to knock as many arrows out of the air as it can. <laughs> sure, Like sure. a baby elephant. Um, yeah. Um, go ahead and make a... I sort of want to say that it should be like sleight of hand. All right. But a fairly, again, a lower DC because you're also matching it with another one of your abilities. For reasons not even he could explain, as Finn does this, he shouts, Nothing up my sleeve! <laughs> Which is funny, because he has tentacle sleeve tattoos. Oh my god! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> 18. Beautiful. That'll be great. Um, the tentacle whirls around like a propeller, forming a wind barrier, um, as well as its own kind of barrier self um, above the heads of the kind of still still battling people below. Um, that is two successes, zero failures. Um, at this point, you see that, like, along with the flaming arrows, which are still sort of falling in the area, um, you see, actually... I don't know if you quite see where it originates from, but clearly some mage on the battlefield um, has cast a, like, fog cloud spell, um, which is interfering with the visibility, clearly protecting, like, the Lithios forces that are starting to get themselves into more advantageous positions. Um, so there is now this, like, fog that is spreading out as you guys are starting to get closer to the battle, along with the problem of the flaming arrows. Um, Malachi, that's your turn. Uh, Malachi is just going to get up in there and try and get in five feet of everybody and ten feet of as many as he can to help provide saving throw assistance and also be able to intercept any attacks or arrows. Yeah, I will say that could be a, like, an athletics check to get yourself... I would say athletics or perception to get yourself like positioned well um, in the most helpful. Yeah. Let's let's do perception because oh. there are probably things that are more that make more sense as athletics. Ooh. Eleven. Eleven. Um, that'll do it for this one. Thank because God. Because you're just kind of trying to trying to get yourself into a good position. I get in there and I can't see either. <laughs> that squeaks by as a success. Yeah, you still can't see, but you can navigate by like touch and sound to a space where you are. And when I see the fire coming, I can go. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Uh, no, no new issue immediately. But Reagan, that is your turn. Okay. Let's ask a physics question. How? Okay, well, so my th my speed is 35 feet. Uh-huh. So I'm wondering, hypothetically, if I was to use my wings as a big fan, yeah. does that count as a 10 mile per hour wind? You know, if hypothetically one beat of my wings... I'm picking up what you're putting down. If you want to use your wings to, like, blow away some of the fog... Um, what skill do you think that... How hard can I flap? Yeah, how hard can you flap, which feels like it should be athletics. So go ahead and go ahead and roll athletics. Uh, 26. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so Reagan, you sort of, uh, from from where you've got your metallic wings outspread protectively, um, you then manifest the the physical wings um, and start kind of like uh, flapping them. I think probably you have to get airborne so that you're not just hitting people with your wings, um, but you get airborne and manage to kind of like blow and disperse some of the fog away, getting everybody a little bit more visibility. Um, great. That is four successes, zero failures. You guys are killing it. Oh, also, Hannah, before we proceed to Finn's turn, um, <clears throat> uh, does Alden see me doing this and does he think it's cool? And does my dad see me doing this and is he so proud of me? Um, yes to both. It is, it's a little bit hard to kind of like find people, but you, you get airborne and manage to blow, blow the fog away so you can actually see people. Um, and you see Railthor from where he's engaged with like his war pick fighting off like three soldiers at once, kind of like looks, looks over his shoulder and doesn't, doesn't have a hand free to give you a thumbs up, but you can tell that he sort of is. Um, and Alden from where he's fighting, um, kind of trying to, clearly trying to keep this group of soldiers from advancing any further into the city, um, gives you like a little smile (laughs) and then they both go back to focusing like the good warriors they are. Um, Finn, uh, as, as the fog disperses, um, you happen to like look up just in time to see that there are a few of these um, the the big constructs like the type that you guys fought in Marquan. There's far fewer of them here, probably due to the nature of this battle. Everyone's been kind of like coming in on ships, and so it was a lot harder to get the big robots here. But there are a few of them, and there's one kind of over by you guys's group. Um, as you watch, you see a couple of longbow shots that look like they came from General Flora and um, Clune, Shiloh's grandma. Wow. Take the robot down and you're like, oh, yay. Except you see that it is starting to topple over um, directly on top of where Baleen is currently distracted fighting against um, somebody else. Huh. So Finn, it's your turn. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Such language, boy. Okay, yeah, I see that, and I gasp, uh, and at first I start to run to tackle her out of the way, and then I realize that I haven't moved since we arrived here, so I'm way too far away to do that. (laughs) Uh, But I have my tentacle, which was floating in the sky, blip down to be right next to Baleen, where it wraps around her and pushes her out of the way. Okay. Make a... This one, I think, can be just, like, a charisma, like, quick quick spellcasting check. Um... So just roll, add your, like, spell attack bonus. 28. Beautiful. Um, yeah, you see uh, the tentacle just kind of, like, grabs her um, and pulls her out of the way um, just as this construct comes crashing down and, like, smashes to the wood below it um, with, like, metallic parts, like, flying everywhere. I mean, you see Baleen kind of shaken, like, looks around for you and finally, like, spots you all the way on the other side and sort of, like, gives a little half wave. Um, I give her a triple thumbs up with both my hands and also my mage hand. Get your head in the (laughs) game, Baleen. She's dealing with a lot right now. <laughs> um, okay. And I do move some ways closer to her and our other allies. Yes. Uh, Malachi, you, um, well, ev- everyone sees this. It's just Malachi's turn next, which is why I'm addressing him. Um, you see the, like, um, part of the dock that is nearest to you guys. Um, you see that there is a, like, a, a stretch of the dock itself, um, which is being secured, like, already the, the dock itself has taken some damage, um, and so basically most of what's keeping it from falling into the sea, um, is that it's been secured by these, like, it, it's partially secured by these ropes, um, and Malachi, you spot, um, a Lithiosian soldier just sort of, like, slice his sword right through uh-huh. a bunch of these ropes, meaning that this portion of the dock that a bunch of people are standing on starts to shift like it is about to go collapsing into the sea. Are we right near it? Um, you are, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna grab those little rope ends real quick. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna pull. <laughs> yeah, that this is an athletics check to grab them, <laughs> grab them quickly enough and basically hold this thing up on your oh, own. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hold up the dock on my own. This is gonna be so hot. Hyping myself up because last roll was shit. 
<laughs> Tell the dice it's going to be hot. <laughs> we're, we're doing better. We're doing better. That is a dirty 20. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. That'll do it. You manage to to grab the ropes kind of just as this starts to slide. And there is a, a matter of a few seconds where Malachi by himself is holding onto um, <laughs> this, this portion of the dock. I let my feet sink into the earth and merge with stone a little bit. <laughs> Wow, I love that scene in Captain America with the helicopter. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then more more of Arabrayer's forces and your allies kind of come around you and grab it and pull it back and tie the knots so that it's okay for at least a moment. God, that was so um, hot of me. <laughs> Reagan, you sort of see see Malachi doing this out of one corner of your eye, but get distracted by a uh, a familiar sounding yell, not because it's a yell you've heard a lot before, but just because it kind of sounds like you. Um, you glance off to the left and see Railthor um, kind of like drop to one knee. He's sort of surrounded by like at least like eight guys who have sort of got him got him surrounded and a little bit far away from you. I mean, you can see that he is sort of uh, struggling, struggling to keep himself upright there. Um, it's your turn. Oh, hell no. <laughs> um, okay, I want to zoom and I fly mm -hmm. and uh, I land in front of him, obviously, superhero pose, three point landing. Mm -hmm shattering the earth slightly around, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And I cast lightning bolt to cook all the motherfuckers present. Beautiful. Yeah, if you're using lightning bolt, that is an auto success. You don't need to roll anything. That's a high level spell. Wow. Um, you, you like land right in front of him, crackling with lightning and send this lightning just like streaking through these guys who've conveniently lined up because they were uh, all circling one guy. So it is pretty easy to uh, get uh, most of them in one blast and send the rest kind of like stumbling back um, and retreating. Um, yeah, beautiful. Well done. Um, I believe that's seven successes, and Sono fails. Good job, guys. Roll worse. Railthor, um, like, breathing breathing heavily still in the middle of his fight here is like, oh, yeah, yep, that kind of... See, this is what I mean about the magic that you get from your mother. That's sort of, oh boy, the stunning every time I see it. You good? Yeah, uh, yeah, yep, still alive. <laughs> um, he, like, claps you on the shoulder. You can see he is, like... This man is bloody, but fortunately, it does seem like the battle is starting to reach its end. Uh, Finn, you see that, like, just offshore, um, one of Erebrer's ships, um, which has sort of, like, been, you can see that there's still people fighting on the deck, but you can also see that the ship itself has taken a lot of damage and is kind of, like, at risk of capsizing and tipping over into the sea. Okay. Am I within 120 feet of that? Sure. <laughs> I send out a telepathic call to every fish in the vicinity to basically, like, swarm the underside of that ship and help hold it upright and keep it steady. Wow. Awesome. Make a, make a persuasion check. Uh, dirty 20. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, that'll that just barely uh, squeezes by through this one because um, fish holding up a ship is a lot. But uh, a lot of fish, though. A lot of fish, though. You manage to um, to to send this call out, and you see like beneath the waves, you sort of see this like silver mass. Um, wow. like rise up and just yeah this it's it's like um it's like when you're like at like a koi pond or something and somebody drops some food in the water and all of a sudden there's a million <laughs> fish there all at this one spot it looks exactly like that they're all like jumping and piling over each other um and just sort of barely managed to rewrite this ship before it flips over entirely um the people on deck kind of look like they have no idea what happened. Um, but you <laughs> you and your head fin hear a bunch of, yay, we did it. Wow, we did it. Chorusing through Great there. job. Great job. Good job, everyone. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, wow. <laughs> um, and then I shout at the confused looking sailors, sometimes fish just do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. One of them calls back. Um, 
Okay, you guys are at uh, eight successes, so you only need one more. Um, Malachi. Oh, actually, Nurgle got like ten successes in the meantime when you weren't paying attention. Oh, okay. So I think we're, we're good. We're good then. Never mind. <laughs> um, uh, Malachi, you as you like step back, your arms kind of weak from <laughs> momentarily holding up an entire dock, sort of shaking the feeling back into them. Um, you look over and see. Shala and Mar, oh, like, back to back, um, with a whole bunch of, like, a group surrounding them that is a few soldiers and also a bunch of, like, lesser demons. Clearly some more of these summons that these mages are bringing in and adding to the fight. Um, and you can see that the two of them are, like, back to back, neither of them's down yet, but they are clearly outnumbered and there's no other, like, of your allies in a position to help close by. Um, I'm going to assume that since I was at the shore and holding up the dock, I don't know how efficient I'll be in one more person being the the wave to turn this. I don't know what metaphor makes mm-hmm. sense here. Mm-hmm. But uh, what I can do is I can whip out my little holy symbol and turn the faithless on all the little demons. Awesome. Because they can handle a couple soldiers. Yeah. Malika continues to do everything in his power to avoid hanging out with his moms. <laughs> Cool, yeah. Okay, um, I think instead of them rolling, I'll have you roll. Um, go ahead and make a, like like what Finn did, go ahead and add your charisma and proficiency bonus, like a spell attack roll. Dirty 20? Yeah, that'll do it. Ah, phew. You, you sort of like run to where you can get them in range and hold up your holy symbol. Um, all the demons' attention immediately snaps to you. And as this like light blazes out. Be gone, bitches. They, like, shriek and scurry back out of the way. Um, You see, like, Shala quickly, like, spins this hammer and brings it down on one of the soldiers. Um, And the soldiers also kind of, like, no longer being flanked by a bunch of scary-looking demons, um, start looking for their own way out of there. Um, Cool. That's nine successes. Um, So things do not get worse. Um, You guys continue to sort of fight alongside your allies. This cannon above you from the adventurer's airship fires a few more blasts. Um, And Malachi, you hear the sort of like horns from the Lithios ships in a series of blasts that you know indicates retreat. Malachi lets out a whoop. The Lithios forces begin to, to pull back and you hear um, a bell rings from the tower, from Erebrer's tower. That you sort of, you guys didn't really get briefed on what the, like, commands are for the Erebrer uh, army. Is that, um, is that dinner? What? <laughs> but it seems, to, it seems to indicate sort of, like, to, to get Lithios off the island, but then to not pursue. Because the boats sort of pull back and everyone holds the dock, but otherwise pulls back and sort of starts taking deep breaths and checking injuries. Oh, is is fifth period over? Question. This whole time, was that clockwork bitch just, like, sitting up there watching everything, or was she doing anything? Um, yeah, you saw her, like, she made her little speech, and then the, uh, beam kept firing from her cannon you saw her at one point like swoop down with her big swords uh she she kept like swooping down attacking or like knocking someone into the water and then like swooping back up like she didn't get stuck in the melee she very much is like bouncing up and keeping herself like visible um but she was also like you you see a fair number of arrows from lithios getting pretty solidly directed at her um and she wow i hope some of them hit at this point as the battle's over you see that she is like she she has arrows sticking out Ugh, of now her, everyone's just kind of like out of cool. her armor and in between her um but yeah it does it kind of looks cool <laughs> um i can shoot you a few times if they would help yeah um yeah is there anybody who i can shoot in the back as they retreat 
yeah, sure, absolutely. Like as 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 everybody's pulling back, there's still some like fire being exchanged. Finn takes some pot shots at the ship sailing away, specifically aiming for their sails. Yeah, yeah. The the ships that are pulling back are sort of limping away because a lot of them are damaged. Um, it's just eldritch blasting at random. Um, and a cheer goes up from Arabrer's forces as this has sort of been uh, what could have been a devastating attack. The the effects have been mitigated. The shield, although flickering, is still intact above the city. Um, you see the adventurer, like, sort of waves, and then she, like, sails up, back up to her airship. And you see the airship is kind of, like, starting to coast down slowly, uh, but, like, it's going to land in, in the water. Ah, uh, finally. Back where a ship belongs. Malachi lets go of the dock that people had tied to shore so that she has nowhere to dock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah... Is the king visible? Yeah, uh, make a perception check. Because he was a giant bird, right? Yeah. Ooh, that one. <laughs> yeah. You look around, but you are like, you are not spotting him amongst the chaos and confusion. Um, he wasn't really close to you guys. Reagan, that's not the king. That's just Nurgle. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. I know he has a regal air about him, but. I'm a little discombobulated. I flapped really hard. <laughs> Oh yeah, Nurgle's told me that can be a doozy. In this downtime, Hannah, can I uh, give my dad um, a second level cure wounds? You sure can. Um, yeah, you you do that. You see the so some of the the places where blades have stabbed into him or scoured across his flesh kind of start to close up, and he's like, "Oh, that was multi talented." Fourteen. He gets fourteen back. Um, you see, as you guys are sort of. Uh, reconvening. Um, you see Nell and Alden and Shiloh and Baleen, kind of all four of them sort of converge around you guys. Um, wow, Baleen replacing Ben. I love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> all of them sort of like breathing heavily and you guys are too. Like everyone clearly has been in a battle. But uh, Alden sort of like gestures over to where the airship is coming down and is like, so we have a guest. Maybe she's changed her ways. Mm. Mm. Follow-up question. Can I see General Flora? Um, yes. I won't make you roll for that. You can see her. She is, like, um, clearly assessing, do, doing, like, a head count of her squad at the moment. Okay. She's she's tall, so she stands out. And it seemed that General Flora was a pretty high-ranking, uh, I mean, she's a general. Like, she's she's yeah. up there, perhaps has the ear of the king. Yes, it did. You you have gotten that impression. Okay. I am going to focus on her and cast message Ooh. and telepathically tell her, hey, it's me, the sexy blonde guy over here. Um, that bit, don't, do not, we do not trust this airship lady. Bad news, bad. I know she's going to be really impressive. Bad news. Tell the king we do not fuck with her. Please, I wouldn't be telling you this if this wasn't, like, legit. Um, Reagan, make a persuasion check. <laughs> um, hi! <laughs> uh, I rolled a 19, comes to a 24. Um, yeah, you see her, her brow kind of furrows as you unexpectedly start speaking in, in her ear, and she, like, looks around, uh, for the source of it. How um, did you get kind this of locking number? eyes with you where you're standing. Um, and she, you hear her respond, um, and she's like, yes. King Mananon uh, informed us to be wary. And so wariness will be the uh, position that we'll take here. I don't want to... I don't think active hostility would be prudent, but we certainly aren't going to listen to everything she says. That's We're, we're already prepared for that, don't worry. Okay, good, because I'm going to be honest with you, it was several episodes ago and we I completely forgot that we told you that. Uh, this all would well, have been a lot you, cooler you if we You would have had hadn't. no reason to know um, that King Mononon had also told me that, because that happened while you guys were off at Mark One, so we're good. Right, 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 okay. Yes. Yeah, no, just want to, you know, make sure we're all on the same page here. You're not in front and all that. Anyways, uh, yes. all, you, all you guys good? Do you, do you need anything? Do you need donuts? Casualties could have been a lot worse. Um, thank you for your aid. 
Um, Kachow. We can see that our tree is the best. <laughs> yeah, your tree your tree is great. I um, mean, it looks like as you sort of are looking around, you see one, like the tree kind of on the opposite, um, like the western side, is probably up in flames as there is like smoke over on that side. Um, but the, it looks like the third tree kind of toward the back of the island is also intact. Um, so two out of three sacred trees at this point. You don't know enough about how the shield works to know exactly what that means, but it seems like it could be worse. Maybe I can go sit by the other one for eight hours. And <laughs> wow, maybe you could. Uh, as, as you all are gathering yourselves, um, you see, um, now you can see King Mananon as he like takes a position up at the top of the tower. Like he was before the battle, he sort of leans out over it, um, and his voice somehow being magically amplified, projects over the city. Um, and he he just says, Well done, forces of Erebrer. We've repelled their first attack. They know that Erebrer will not be so easily felled. Uh, there is a cheer. A cheer from the crowd. Um, Why? Thank you. Yippee! Thank you to all of our recently arrived allies for your assistance in this battle. You're welcome! There is still more to come, so everyone take this, take this time to regroup. Your commanders will give further instructions. We need to be prepared for future attacks, and we need to be prepared to retaliate. Well done, he says again. For Erebrer, he yells, and, and everyone kind of, like, cheers, cheers along with him again. Um, and he descends from the tower kind of by foot this time and not uh, as a bird. Oh man. Um, by this point, you see the adventurer's ship has sort of, like, docked um, a little ways away from you guys. She didn't land at the one right by you guys. You don't know. That might just be, you know prudence on her part to not land right next to you but um but you can see that like um the like gangplank gets connected and you see the adventurer like walks down off of the ship um you know triumphantly like she owns the place um you also spot following behind her is Ben. You can see he is now wearing, like... Ugh. Does he have armor? <laughs> he does. He has, but he has, like, leather armor, and over it he's wearing these, like, colorful robes. Um, okay, court jester. A little bit, yeah. Like, not, like, a gaudy, but, like, clearly, uh, like, attention-getting. Finn sees him, and instantly his hand starts twitching at his side, and he whispers, gotta save my spells, gotta, <laughs> gotta conserve the spells, okay? we got." He'd make a real pretty snail right now. Oh, boy. Oh, I didn't know Joseph and the amazing Technicolor bitch coat was in town. Um, let me know if you guys are genuinely heckling them, and also let me know how close you're getting. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say that loud enough that they could maybe hear if they wanted to, but it's mostly like the SpongeBob fish meme of who invited that guy. Yeah, ba- Baleen laughs. <laughs> Finn was just whispering to himself, but I do first. I want to check on Baleen. Uh-huh. Just be like, hey, how you doing? Uh, any major oh. wounds? <laughs> um, she like looks looks down at like a long cut on her arm, and it's like, I don't, does this count? I don't know what counts as a major wound. This was like uh, I, I don't, don't know ten so. hit points or something. That doesn't Which look great. Which is like great. a lot for me, but... Oh, yeah. But I'm okay. Uh, okay, but I mean, that's pretty good, you know, if that's yeah. all you came away with. Uh, any, I'm not bloodied, so... Any guilt that will haunt you forever at the horrible acts you committed this day? Uh, probably not, but, you know, we'll have to see what happens kind of tomorrow. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, no, it's probably fine. Right now the adrenaline's still going, so it's early to tell. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then I give a glance to my party mates, and I start walking over to the adventurer to meet her. Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna let Finn walk alone. <laughs> Yeah, I want to, like, flex my wings, and if I'm still, like, raging, that helps. Like, I, you know, just kind of, like, you know, little little Henry Cavill shoulder reload kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, and I just want to look as fucking, I want to look as badass and as scary and just as needlessly high-leveled barbarian sorcerer as I am. Sure. Malachi's going to look normal. And I want to make Ben pee himself a little <laughs> bit. And maybe also Papa Semi. <laughs> Malachi doesn't want to let on how strong he is, I think. Okay, so 
Uh, Reagan, make an intimidation check for me. Can I have advantage from my babies? Um, no. Babies make a man more endearing, Nolani. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, 22. Okay. Finn walks over and he's all smiles. He's trying to be endearing. Great. We're sending a really mixed message. <laughs> <laughs> Malia's gonna walk right between you two, totally neutral. <laughs> Yeah, collectively not on the same page. Um, behind you, you see um, Nell and Alden and Shiloh have some sort of hushed exchange between the three of them um, that somehow ends with, like, Alden quickening his step to catch up with you guys. Mm. Um, Shiloh, like, hanging back mm. by, like, Baleen and the rest of your unit, and Nell just, like, disappearing into the crowd. Nice. <laughs> wow, so we're, like, really nailing this. <laughs> so really mixed messages from all over the place, but... <laughs> um. As you get closer, you see that also with the adventurer and Ben kind of on the the rest of the ship, um, you see a collection of like about a dozen um, people who are now in like like gleaming silver armor um you recognize like some members of triple a who sort of like flew off with the adventurer you also see some faces that you have like never seen before um and you also kind of know that like this isn't everyone Mm -hmm. that she flew away with so the sort of is a little bit of a somewhere along the way she lost a bunch of people but everyone that she does have with her, like, looks a lot, for those that you're familiar with, they look a lot stronger. Um, and they're, again, they're wearing this, like, gleaming silver armor so that they very much, like, look like a unit that matches each other and matches the adventurer. Mm. And they sort of follow, follow behind. Um, you see, the adventurer gives a little bow to King Mononon and then shakes his hand. But not the appropriate depth of bowing. Right. It is not it is mm. like it is like the the polite bow that like two nobles give to each other rather than like a deep like your sovereign here bow. Yeah. Um but there is there is a bow. Um and then she shakes his hand. We we've got a sort of mix of customs here. <laughs> the um, Does she kiss both cheeks? <laughs> yeah. And then hugs him with one arm and copious backslap. Yeah, <laughs> greetings are really elaborate because you've got to do all of them in order to be properly polite. Um, you can hear that they're exchanging just like a sort of polite um, King Mononon is like, thank you for the aid. The word of your deeds has traveled far. Um, and she's like, of course, we are. T- we are so glad. We're just glad that we got here in time. Um, and he's like, yes, well, we shall talk further. Um, in the meantime, I shall. I, I have to address what comes next. Um, and he sort of turns turns away from her. As he does, he, like, catches sight of you guys and sort of, like, inclines his head a little in, like, a, a respectful nod. Um, and is like, nice. excellent work with that fleet off to the eastern side. That was quite impressive. Um, thank you for keeping the trees safe. Thank you. Um... As the king turns his attention to you, she also turns her attention to you um, and gives, like, a bright smile. Um, Finn smiles even brighter back. (laughs) (laughs) It's a brief blinding clash of smiles here. Um, Reagan looks absolutely terrifying, by the way. As you guys have walked over here, people were, like, kind of skittering out of your way a little bit. um, As Reagan is just, like, still smells like ozone and is still, like, covered in a decent amount of blood. Some his own, some other people's. They Um, skitter out of the way and then they see Finn and they just stop and get really confused. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the wings are still out, I presume, Reagan. Yeah. Yeah, so you've still got these wings kind of like spread out behind behind uh Finn and Malachi on either side of you. And you uh Yeah, you you see the adventurer like smiles at you and sort of takes note of Reagan's terrifying glower. Um Ben sort of half behind her just looks smug but also like he is staying behind her (laughs) like he's keeping her between you guys and him we approach and i say snail and well sorry hail and well met (laughs) hello it is good to see you again although i wish i must say i wish we were meeting under you know more peaceful conditions but i've i've been hearing great things about your work and i trust you've been hearing i mean i mean you saw what i've been working on she she gestures to the sky and then gestures to the big cannon on her airship yes great cannon oh yeah we're aware oh thank you um so we um i'm i'm glad 
that we find ourselves once more on the same side. Yeah, me too. It's uh, good to see you. Thank you for your help against the fleet. Uh, Malachi, for the record, <laughs> yeah, me too does not register as a lie, but good to see you. Your axe buzzes. That's a lie. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to decide if I'm glad we're on the same side. Is, yeah. I think I'm glad we're on the same side as a lie. Mm. I think that, that click says, like, this is not true. Wow, she's been lying this whole time. So, uh, what's up? You know, what what brings you here exactly? You know, just magnanimous altruism? You know, the thing we all uh, know and love and expect from you? Um, yeah, you could, you could call it that. Eh? Uh, the last thing that I want is to see... Erebrer fall before the Empire. Uh, before the Empire or just period? Fall like as the Empire is steamrolling over them. Before in that sense. Yes, I see. Under their feet, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm glad we clarified. Well, you never know with you, so. I think you can tell that she is like sizing you guys up in this conversation kind of as much as you're sizing her up. And she also like keeps like her her gaze keeps sort of like flicking around to the rest mm. of like Arabrer's forces who are all still like pretty close in this area. Yeah. Um so we we wish to come and lend our aid to Arabrer. Hopefully with all forces combined here we will be able to defeat Lithios once and for all. Nice. Yes. So like what's the what's the plan then? I'll leave that to. Well, how do we how do we go from repelling this invasion to defeating Lithios once and for all? Because I'd love to be involved with that. Yes, <laughs> I was thinking just uh, you know show of superior force and uh, cleverly employed tactics. At this point, she's raising her voice a little and turning her shoulders out to everybody else, um, kind of not uh, only half paying attention to you guys at this point. Um, but I believe. That Lithios is not nearly as strong or as all-powerful as they like to present. With our forces combined and with the magic that the people of this land wield, I know that we will be able to defeat them. Cool, and then what? Yeah. Few forces are as all-powerful as they like to believe. Ah, uh, True. She she nods like so true, Malachi, <laughs> um, and ignores Finn's question, and then just sort of like uh, looks looks back to the four of you, um, Alden, kind of standing there with you guys as well, and just like nods nods her head again, and is like, "Well then, um, we will." I'm I'm looking forward to fighting alongside you. Did you find what you were looking for in the Aberrant Sea? I did, actually. It was a, a very important component of this uh, construction here. Um, that's true, by the way. This is... She's referring to the cannon or the ship? Refer yes, sorry, referring to the cannon. Um, a very important important aspect of this, this cannon that we've constructed. When she turns and gestures to the cannon, she notices, maybe for the first time, that there are several seagulls perched on top of her <laughs> ship. Nurgle among them. Are they all shitting? But, uh... Congratulations on your successful efforts in the Aberrancy as well. I am glad that we both came out of that having accomplished what we set out to do. Oh, well, we never said what we set out to do, but... Well, I assume you accomplished what you said. I suppose maybe you... We usually do. ...killed the High Priestess by accident. For all you know, we fucked up big time, <laughs> huh? <laughs> um, she, she says, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you that you usually accomplish what you set out to do. We, uh, after all, we have the same goals, so. Mm, that's not true, but. She ignores you again and turns to, like, walk walk away from the conversation. Malachi turns away first. <laughs> <laughs> you see her start to turn away and real quick do a 180. And Malachi <laughs> just whips around. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, Good to see you on two feet again, Ben. Good to be on two feet again instead of on one <laughs> limb. I don't even really know. Uh, technically, it's your stomach. It's not like they tell you what snail things are called. It's, it's your stomach. Yeah, stomach. It, you're called a gastropod. It means stomach foot. Fun fact. You're just going to tell everyone you were a snail? That's kind of embarrassing. Well, these guys are... These guys already know. Honestly, maybe you should do a little research for next time, you know? Pays to be prepared. Maybe there won't be a next time, Finn, as we, you know, 
are now allies, right? Finn holds out a bag of pretzels to him. <laughs> you want a snack, Ben? Not too salty for you, is it? <laughs> he does one of those kind of like quick, like, uh, like he's like, he's starting to, as you guys are talking, he's starting to walk after the adventurer. And he does one of those quick kind of like triple steps away from you as you like, as if you've startled him with it um, as you hold it up. <laughs> Can I subtly take Alden's hand? <laughs> yes. Thanks. Uh, roll for dexterity there, please. <laughs> Ro- roll for sleight of hand. It feels like you're trying to make someone jealous, but I can't figure out who. So that's the confusion in my voice. No, it was really more just about like stability for me and possibly oh, reassurance okay. for him. Yeah, he squeezes your hand a little. Are those 12 silver armored people down here with us or did they stay on the ship? Hmm. I think, like, a couple of them got left on the ship, probably as, like, guards, but the rest of them sort of followed the adventurer down and are now, like, sort of mingling with the people from Erebrer. I walk up to a few of them. Yeah. Hey! Uh, hey, what's up? I'm Finn. Nice to meet you. I'm sure you've heard all about me. Um, yeah, Finn, you see that one of them is, um, Quarion, (gasps) the, uh, elf that you guys had helped rescue, like, from the same execution that you rescued Baleen from. He's so sexy. Uh, he, he gives you a, mm, make an insight check, actually. 22. Cool. Uh, a sort of a wary look, but you can detect that he does still kind of, like, feel fond toward you. After all, you saved his life. Um, but there is a, like, a wariness and a wariness that you're getting from all of them that, like, suggests clearly they've been warned, don't listen to Finn. Um, but Quarion still still does feel a little bit friendly toward you. Um, and so he, like, smiles and nods and is like, hi. Hey, oh my god, Quarion, you're alive! Wow! Now that guy hears Quarion and tries not to act like he's rushing over, but he kind of is. <laughs> god, it's great to see. You know, I was worried that, you know, the adventure was going to kill you like she ki- tried to kill us and, like, several other of her followers, but uh, what are the odds she'd do that uh, a fifth time, right? <laughs> uh, and you guys, hey, uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, just wanted to, you know, give you a little warning from someone who's been there before. If Ben says he's going to write a song about about you he's not really gonna that's just what he says to get on your good side he told me he'd do it and do i hear a song no uh it's probably hard to compose when you're a snail though but snompose sorry i'm just going on and on uh so what brings you here what uh what made you decide to uh join up with her goldenness um first of all finn make a like I guess persuasion or deception, kind of depending on which one you're leaning on harder here. Because you haven't strictly said anything untrue, but you are, like, taking a very friendly tone here that (laughs) feels to me like deception. That's just how he is. Ah, well, that is a 26 (laughs) persuasion. Wow. (laughs) Awesome. You see that when you, like, mention Ben being a snail, um, one of the others kind of, like, laughs a little and, like, hides her face behind her <laughs> hand. Um, and you see uh, Quarion sort of gives half a smile and is like, yeah, Ben uh, appeared on the deck of the ship as a snail after he had an apparent run-in with you guys. So that was, uh, <laughs> I'll admit, it was it was pretty funny. You're welcome. Wasn't his first time. And we're, we're following the adventurer to help to help bring an end to this war like we were trying to do the whole time. I mean, it's sort of a in for a penny, in for a pound situation. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. And she's going to let you go home after that? You've, like, got that in writing or something, right? I can only assume a canny fellow such as yourself. He he just sort of slowly is like, yeah, that's not really the type of thing that I'd have to get in writing. (laughs) <laughs> right, right. Yeah, the adventurer would never mislead uh, someone in her employ. What am I thinking? She, oh, no, she did do that, didn't she? Several times. All right. What's what's the goal here, Fisher? My goal is to make friends. Mm. Well. You know, you can always use more of those. Then it's great to be friends. Yeah. I give him a wet handshake. <laughs> shakes your hand and then sort of like pulls it back and shakes it off these guys are like 
they were just up on the airship operating the cannon, so they are not covered in blood and wounds the way pretty much everybody else on this dock is right now. Um, so he sort of like pulls pulls his hand back from your wet handshake and like shakes it out and is like, yeah, thanks, thanks. Malachi comes up and like sort of like clasps Finn on the shoulder. Hey, bud, what you doing? Hey, oh, just talking to uh, my new friends here. Sorry, what, what were your names? I gestured to the other two. Malachi is covered in blood. <laughs> He's got a sick pump going from holding up the dock. I think one of them, the one that sort of like smirked um, about Ben, like points to herself and she's like, I'm Emma. Um, And the other one just sort of like fixes you with a somewhat stony glare. And it's like, I'm not telling you. Ooh, Malachi, you and this guy should hang out. (laughs) Not telling you, is there? You would have a lot to refuse to talk about, I bet. (laughs) (laughs) Malachi gives the guy a nod. (laughs) Not telling you, it sounds... Sounds gnomish. Are you a gnome? Obviously, I'm not a gnome, says this human who is like a little bit short for a human, <laughs> but otherwise, obviously not a gnome. Okay. Um, as you guys are standing here having this conversation, um, you see a, like a messenger, um, not one of the animal messengers, a, a dwarven messenger Aww. comes up and lo- looks, looks around at, at the group. And sort of uh, looks to the three of you and is like, um, Finn Fisher, uh, Reagan Starkweather, and Malachi Kassir, um, your presences are requested by King Mananon at a war council um, in one hour's time. Um, meet at the council table, um, which is, it's behind, it's like behind the throne. <laughs> the the area kind of back there. I lean in and whisper to Malachi, oh shoot, I didn't know we were supposed to get him presences. <laughs> no, just your presences. It's the presence. Your, your presences is the presence, you see. Uh, Malachi thanks the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the messenger looks looks around kind of at at the people like around you guys um, and then like looks back at you and is like um do you guys know where someone named Nell is I'm pretty sure they're an ally of yours and Nell like pops out of the crowd like right next to them and is like hey I'm right here um and the messenger's like oh uh, your presence is requested as well as a representative of your group um and Nell's like got it thanks and the messenger like heads heads off to presumably go summon more people. Mm. Um, Quarion and his little group sort of took this out to, like, walk away from you guys. Um, First, did they hear how awesome we are? (laughs) As they walk away, I call after them. Uh, Hey, uh, great talking to you. Catching up, Quarion. Great to meet you, Emma and uh, miscellaneous. (laughs) Have a good day. Love the look, by the way. Beautiful armor. I mean, look at the glint on that. That can shine bright even in, uh, you know, such a big shadow like the adventurers. Uh, Oh, and Emma. She looks back. On the house, I toss her a jar of supplements. (laughs) (laughs) She catches them and, like, looks at them. And then the, the, like, the third one who wouldn't give you his name is like, those are probably poisoned. And she's like, why would he just throw me a jar of poison? We're not stupid. (laughs) And they, you sort of hear them debating this as they, like, move away from you. You can have one too, but you gotta pay because you were rude. (laughs) He does not acknowledge you. Um, cool. So do you guys have anything that you want to do? Otherwise, the camera can cut right to the uh, war council. Or if you'd like to, like, take a short rest or anything like that, you have an hour. That might be a good idea. Yeah, mainly I just want a short rest. I would like to, if any of the silver adventurer knights are still around, yeah. milling about, I just, like... I just grab someone, walk with them past, like, the spots where those silver guys are talking and just say things like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, it's nice to see the adventurer hasn't killed any more of her followers. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, I mean, I guess they think they can trust her. I'm not sure I would, but bah, 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 Yeah, bah. last time I saw that sword, it was in my stomach. <laughs> Finn, make a, I frankly think this is going to be an intimidation check to see kind of, because you did, you saw as the three of them walked away from you, like, you did... Get under their skin just a little bit, despite the fact that they've clearly been prepped on don't listen to Finn or something like that. Um, but go go ahead and make an intimidation check for how well you're sowing discord here. Uh, can Nurgle get the advantage? Um, Nurgle's the one that I'm having this conversation <laughs> with. He's perched on my arm. Alternately, could I give advantage with my... Yeah, nice. Malachi and Reagan can give you advantage if they're participating in this. Then you can yeah. get advantage on this. Yeah, I mean, the last time I saw her, she was cutting me down. 
on a mission she sent me on, so. I know! <laughs> Imagine having to build fake wings. <laughs> Imagine wanting to take a ship out of the ocean. Unbelievable. <laughs> she really does go against everything you stand for. That's 22. Cool. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see some of them are just sort of like giving you dirty looks out of the corner of their eye, but some of them are definitely like, the, the dirty looks sort of soften a little as they're listening to you. Malachi looks utterly solemn the entire time. Malachi, take your shirt off real quick. I want to see how that scar's coming along. Oh, yeah. Malachi uh, unclips his chest plate and <laughs> lifts up his chain underneath to show Reagan the scar. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, that's from where the adventurer uh, cut me down with that blade she was carrying because... Uh, wow, that looks even worse than I remember. Yeah. I, she was done using me for the mission she sent me on. Man. <laughs> Simpler times. Great, great. Hey, and she's kept up the tradition of giving people matching outfits. And then after a second, Finn whispers, wait, I, I guess that wasn't a dig. That is just a nice thing she does. <laughs> well, she didn't sew our jackets by hand. You know, she outsourced that labor. Um, cool. Anything else? Well, you guys can short rest. Yeah. That's no problem. That's kind of what that's kind of what everyone around you is doing is like bandaging wounds and the fires around the city get put out. Um, if you guys want to like walk over and look at the other sacred tree you see this like similar evergreen that is like uh, all of the needles are like burned and the tree itself is scorched but you can see that like already there's a couple like druids and rangers over there like casting spells on it to try and heal it can i over there and help in this hour i can't do it for eight hours straight right now but yeah if if you are willing to use the spell slot yeah yeah i'll I'll cast plant growth for their fancy tree absolutely yeah you cast plant growth and and see some of the like one of the branches like all the needles kind of start to to come back and turn this dark green again and the uh the druid who's working on it gives you a big smile if i had seven more hours i would do more but oh that's okay we're all working with what we can get here nurgle licks my wounds clean wow i guess seagulls have tongues um okay are you done short resting oh yeah yeah Cool. So you guys um, help with some of the cleanup around the island. You um, sow doubt in the minds of the adventurers' followers. You, um, a lot of people are like, actually, frankly, you see that quite a few of Arabrare's soldiers seem like a little wary of you guys, especially of Finn. Um, yeah. You. Oh yeah, 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 but in a very scary way. Um, so it's it's a mixture of like people who are like you know clapping you guys on the shoulder and like offering you drinks. Um, uh, no, we have a war council, sorry. And people who are sort of like giving Finn a wide berth. <laughs> um, but also he's so smiley that generally. Uh, oh yeah, I'm saying hi to everyone. It's sort of counterdicting it. I take every drink that anyone offers any of us. Um, Malachi keeps going, no, we have a war council, and I keep on- What? Hey, Reagan, come on, you don't even like lemonade that much. (laughs) The atmosphere here is, like, celebratory, but also very wary. Like, people are still definitely, like, casting a look out to where Lithios has pulled back, but did not pull out of sight. You can still see the fleet, like, arrayed out in the Mm. open ocean. It's a clear enough day to sort of see them. I flip them off. Although, as the hour goes on, you see that, like, the the sky gets more overcast and, like, fog almost rolls in a bit, kind of obscuring you and Lithios from each other as the sea, like, continues to be roiling. Just the way I like it. <laughs> Is that true? Oh, yeah. I like, I like a choppy, scary sea. Huh. I've kind of always pictured you as kind of like a tropical blue kind of guy. Well, I mean, I do love it all. <laughs> It says just the way I like it about the sea, no matter what it's doing. Every time. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you know, you can't limit yourself to just one flavor of ice cream, right? It's like that. Um... When it's been an hour, when you've had a chance to to sort of catch your breath and regather your strength, you guys head over to the island that the uh, king's court is on. Um, you uh, see, as it as it sort of has been before, there's a a lot of activity happening. A lot of people kind of like rushing back and forth. The little bridge is actually like fairly crowded because people are sort of rushing back and forth. So there's a lot of people having to like narrowly squeeze past each other on this uh, very narrow vine bridge. Finn just goes through the water instead. Yeah. <laughs> you uh you make your way kind of like past 
Um, King Mononon is not on his throne. So you make your way sort of around the little crystal pool and around the throne as you were directed to, um, to another clearing a little ways back, um, in which there is like a low stone table. Wow, is this where they're going to kill Aslan? Um, sitting uh, behind the head of the table um, is King Mononon, um, with his owl like perched in a tree branch right above him. Um, you can see that there's like it's it's like a rectangular table, um, but it only has a seat on the narrow end on one side, like it's a table with a head but without mm. a foot, um, and then with like these low stone seats um, like along both sides. And you can see a number of people are, like, uh, filtering in and taking their seats. Um, you see that um, the three of you are invited. You already knew that Nell was invited. Um, they're sitting next to you and talking in a low tone to the spy master Ooh. that you'd previously kind of seen, the Arab Bear spy master with the, the big uh, raven or crow, whatever it was. Um, you also see that um, Railthor is here, along with Hefor. Yeah. Um, it seems like, and you guys have, would have noticed over the past hour, a few other, like, people from Marquan and can sort of pick up that, like, once things were wrapped up at Marquan, a group of fighters got sent back through the teleportation circle to kind of be like, hey, we're good. Yeah. Do you guys need anything? And then we're, like, still caught up. <laughs> we're, we're still here and got sort of caught up in the situation yeah. here now. Um, so Railthor... Who the fuck invited you to a war? Council, I say to my dad. Yeah, Railthor's like, I know, they usually don't let me go to these kinds of things, but I'm sort of like, not a lot of us are here, so I'm one of the highest ranking people. Jesus Christ, we're in deep shit then. <laughs> it gives you like a, a thumbs up and a grin with like a couple teeth missing. <laughs> um, <laughs> is not my dad a literal, just like, mind guy? Like, he just works in the, He's not... <laughs> He's not an He works in the mines, and he's a decent fighter. Like, he's he's up there in terms of their fighters, but he's, like, not a... Not uh, a strategist? <laughs> he's not, like, a strategy guy in the slightest. So, and not a diplomat either. So, Heifer is clearly, like, a little, you know, keeping an eye on him, but... Um, <laughs> he's just, like, looking around and, like, picking random shit up and like, whoa, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love me, Dad. Um... You, you see that, like, a lot of the other, um, like, General Flora is here, as well as a few other people that you've picked up are, like, high-ranking in Arab rare. Um, possibly the most surprising person here um, is that Mar actually walks in um, and comes over and, like, um, mm, I don't, Malachi, do you think that you have an open seat next to you? Or do you like to keep yourself in the middle of people? You tell me. You get here before she does. I don't know. Finn and Reagan, are you sitting next to each other? I'm sitting next to me, Dad. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I would have sat with Malachi. All right. Well, if Reagan's got his dad on one side and Finn on the other, I'll probably be on the end. Okay, cool. So Mar comes and sits in the, like, empty seat next to you. Finn waves her over. Hey, Mar, sit with us! Uh, Malachi Hi. <laughs> improves his posture even more. <laughs> Hi, um... Yeah, she she sits down and she's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm also a little bit confused about why I specifically am here, but the messenger told me to come." So I assume it's because you know how the military operates. I th I think so. I can't think of what else it would be. Um, at this point, you also see. Uh, the adventurer Ugh. walk around into the clearing. Um, she just got here. Just, just her. She doesn't have Ben or the rest of her her entourage at this point. Malachi starts playing Casey Musgraves' high horse over his speaker, <laughs> and takes takes a seat at the table. Um, you see Mananon kind of as as the adventurer slides into her seat, and as everybody else um, kind of filters in and sits down, he like taps his staff three times um, on the, just like on the surface of the table, um, sort of calling everyone to attention as, as a little bit of a hush falls over the clearing. King Mananon looks around um, and says, thank you all for being here. Thank you for your aid over these past, these past few months, over today, over the time we will have going forward. I thought it best to bring everyone together to discuss the situation we find ourselves in and how Erebrer and her allies will act going forward. I actually... Despite the battle of this morning, despite the damage that Luola has sustained, 
I have some good news along with the bad. Lithios is not in as secure a position as she has been pretending or as we have thought. Um, recent received intelligence from a number of sources. I mean, he's sort of like he nods over to the spy master and also to Nell as he says this, um, has indicated that public support from Lithios's own citizens for her current course of action has been severely depleted over the past few weeks. This conquest has been expensive, both in terms of Lithios' resources and in terms of her manpower, her own sons and daughters. It was easier for the citizens of Lithios to tolerate while it was happening slowly, spread out over the course of the past 20 years, but the recent push in the last few months has been more difficult for the people of Lithios to get behind. Additionally, some recent events have really sullied the public perception of the war. Um, the coastal villages, I have heard, are not thrilled about what happened in Gillsbury. A, I should hope not. A village on Lithios' own shores who was fired upon by Lithios's forces. Besieged, even. The story that was put out about it being a den of traitors was perhaps believed at first, but since, since then, uh, it has come to look much less sympathetic. Additionally, the uh, story of Dr. Retval's activities, um, what, what had been a, a quiet, mostly hushed up rumor for a little while now of what he had done, the torture and killing of sorcerers in order to steal the magic from their bodies, um, has now become... I elbow Reagan and point to my mouth like, that's you, that's you. <laughs> oh my God. I spit on the ground derisively. Um has now become a more well-known fact. Um, and this has particularly impacted the way that the military of Lithios feels about their current actions, as many of the sorcerers who were in Dr. Retval's labs were soldiers who were said to have been killed in action. And many mm. of the current forces have not been happy to determine that this is what actually happened to their comrades. Um, you guys remember, that was what happened to Alden. Yeah. I elbow Reagan again and whisper, like Alden. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <laughs> um, and then finally, um, we cannot discount that the many of the people have uh, been taken with the stories being spread of... Uh, the adventurer and her her activities um, and, and those of her followers um, in situations like the stopped execution in Dermator and the... Uh, actually, the adventurer was not there for that. The, the fall of Dr. Retfall's tower. The songs that have been spread. Do you say this, Malachi? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah, you say that. Um, King Mononon, um... Oh, but he doesn't want to disrespectfully interrupt the king. Yeah, it is like a little bit like people, the, the asides are okay, but no one is speaking over the mm. king, which is why I'm clarifying. Ugh. Uh, Malachi will politely raise his hand. <laughs> um, you, you raise your hand. Um, the king sort of pauses. Not all the way. I don't want to look desperate. He just sort of like. Mm -hmm. The king pauses and like looks to you. Um, yes. Uh, do respect your majesty. The adventurer was not there for those events. Yes, the adventurer and... Well, she was at the tower. And her followers. Um, and yes, I, I do not mean to... I would not categorize ourselves as such. I do not mean to discount your own achievements, Captain Kassir. But... Oh, great. Now everyone thinks I'm fucking fishing for valor. Once again, I, el I elbow <laughs> Reagan. I whisper, get a load of the brown noser over here, huh? <laughs> I'm not valor fishing. <laughs> um, but um, the narrative that has been spread. And I think Malachi make an insight check. Well, I don't want to have said it if he thinks that I'm just being a tool. Uh, 14. Okay. You could see that Mononon, a 14 is good enough to tell that, like, he's not, like, 
pissed at you. He's just sort of like, he's making the point that like, the semantics of who actually did it don't matter to him in this moment. What matters is that the people have credited that instance to the adventurer umbrella. Yeah, he wants to make sure uh, the king's advisors don't get swayed by the narrative. <laughs> yeah, so you 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 make that point. Um, the king then says, but but yes. So the between the the stories that are being spread of those who are fighting against the empire and the things that Lithios has done recently that have angered her people, um, public support for the war is very low. And there are calls to remove the king from his throne and replace him with someone new. More calls than can be violently silenced. We can do that? (laughs) Anyone can do that uh, if there's enough of them doing it. Um, Additionally, the loss of High Priestess Rosalia Starhouse, and now he is like he's doing this crediting thing with his hand to you guys in particular. Oh, well, that was the lurker in the deep. (laughs) The loss of this High Priestess... Her successors are not nearly as warlike as she was. Um, Her influence in the king's ear was part of what accelerated the war recently. With that gone, um, things have... the, The church no longer supports this course quite as ardently as they did. Mm. And of course, the loss of Dr. Retval and of all of his arcane laboratories and technologies has meant that these, the constructs and arcane cannons that we have been dealing with are no longer a renewable resource for Lithios. They are aware that their supply will run dry. Mm. All of this is to say Lithios is not in a good position. We believe that this aggressive act, this bold attack on Luola is a bit of a, uh, a last ditch effort for them. Mm. If they can capture Luola, then Erebrer will be brought to her knees and Lithios can turn her attention back to resettling her own citizens and making promising an end to the uh, an end to the conquest now that they have taken Erebrer out mm. As a competitor. Of course, Erebrer would not be so easily felled as part of our strength is in how divided our lands are, but it would be enough of a blow for Lithios to recover. However, if they fail here badly enough, if enough of those forces that have amassed off of our shores are destroyed, if they are given a humiliating route, if they fail to take Luola and lose a great deal of their resources in the meantime, we believe it will be possible to push for a peace treaty that would keep them confined within their own shores and the shores that should be theirs, at least for the time being. Um, He sort of, he sits back a little and to to let, let the news settle on the table. Um, the adventurer this bitch. leans forward um, and says, good. Then when they are weakened, a counteroffensive can be mounted and Lithios will be able to be crushed entirely. And Mananon like holds up a hand and says, likely that will be outside the scope of what Erebrer is equipped to accomplish or what we need to accomplish. But... If Lithios does pull back and is weakened, is in this state of having to retreat, it would be possible within the next year for the formerly sovereign territories, especially those whose lands were occupied within the last generation, to take advantage of that to free themselves. Um, And he does. He looks right at Malachi and Mar as he says this. And Erebrer would certainly lend what aid we could provide to any of those efforts from territories that were conquered by Lithios as part of this imperialist push. Um, But that is merely a hypothetical at this stage. For right now, we need to actually keep Luola from being taken um, and actually manage to accomplish the hopeful situation that I have just presented here. I just wanted all of you to be aware of the scope of what we were 
fighting for. Mm. He sits back again. When the king mentioned dealing them an embarrassing blow, Malachi looks at Finn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, sinking ships? Oh, love that. Oh, yeah. I we. I mean, you, you definitely can do that. Oh, yeah. With pleasure. Probably could do it even better if you had some of the adventurer's cubes. That's true. Yeah, the adventurer, Madam Adventurer, if you'd like to, you know, support the effort by gifting me some of your powerful cubes, I wouldn't say no. That we helped collect for you? Yeah. Very, be very generous of you. She narrows her eyes and gives you guys like a little bit of like a flat smile um, that doesn't reach her eyes. Malachi gives one right back. Um, Finn gives puppy dog eyes at her. <laughs> um, and says, quite a few of my arcane resources are devoted to keeping the airship aloft and keeping the cannon operational. But what we can spare, certainly, we, we have no problem uh, lending you some of our resources. Cool. Thanks. I guess. Yeah, great. Um, the king um, holds up, uh, kind of like takes takes a a rolled scroll that has been like sitting on the table in front of him and like holds it up without unrolling it. Um, and he says, this is a communication from Lithios that was delivered within the past hour, the time since the battle. Um, it is inviting representatives of... Erebrer, to discuss a potentially peaceful resolution at dawn tomorrow. Now, I am anticipating that our terms will not be amenable to them and their terms will not be amenable to us. I don't think a resolution that is satisfactory to both parties can be reached at this stage as they likely will be demanding Luola's full surrender. After they retreated. But uh, General Flora will be going to speak on Erebrer's behalf, as well as a few others, he kind of points out. Um, and then he looks at, uh, he looks at Malachi and Mar again, and he says, um, we've received word that one, one of Lithios's generals who will be present um, at these talks is a General Neiman. I believe that there is a tie between the two of you and him. Um, and you see Mar sort of, like, settles, she, like, settles a little bit and has a, like, ah, uh, this is why I'm here sort of look on her face. Um, but um, he says, so I wish, I wish to ask if there is anything that either of you can think of that we should know. Hannah told me everything that I know. <laughs> um, Mar will say, um, she, she, like, takes a beat, um, and probably, like, exchanges a glance with Malachi. Mm. Um, and then she says, uh, the general will follow whatever directives he's been given. Um, he's very hard to shake. Um, he also is a very smart man with a lot of experience. Um, but a lot of his experience is with a smaller scale activities than this um he will be probably quite um firm but friendly i would say his presence at these negotiations indicates that we probably don't have to worry about um the negotiators that we send being killed he wouldn't he would see something like that as dishonorable um and mononon nods and is like that's good to know as as the king sits back and as this news again as there's this kind of like moment of settling, Mar like leans a bit over to you, Malachi, and just like says quietly, um, "Do you want to go to the negotiations? Were you intending to? I don't think I have a leg to stand on there, but you could possibly ask the king. I don't think they'd let me go. Do you want me to? <sighs> I trust you." So, yes. Uh, Malachi kind of raises his hand again. Uh, your majesty. Um, <laughs> you can, the table's quiet. You can speak. The negotiating party, your majesty. You mentioned General Flora. Yes. Might I ask who else? Um, he points out, um, he says, uh, Captain Dagmar and indicates a like dwarven man sitting next to General Flora, as well as Captain Ega. 
and indicates like another person sitting sitting at this table, another dwarf, and then says, and they will take a small a small group of guards with them as well, just as a precaution, not enough to look like a show of force, but enough to make it clear that we won't stand for any underhandedness, um, even though you say that such a thing is unlikely. And did they indicate who would be present in their own party besides the General Neiman? We know that General Neiman will be there. Intelligence suggests that General Crevitas, <gasps> although he is present in this fleet, intelligence suggests that he will not be there. Mm. Um, he has a reputation for being a hothead. Uh, no, and I think true, that yeah. Lithios is keeping him away from what could be a tense situation. That's for the best. <laughs> Have you guys ever been reading the word hothead and pronounced it in your head as hothfeed? Because I do that sometimes. I've never read hothead on paper, no. Me neither, come to think of it. Or, or shithead. Shith, shithead. Railthor goes all the time. All the time. <laughs> Fucking thank you. And people are always calling me both those things, so it comes up kind of a lot. Eh, nah, God. Dehead. And is, is the assumption that these negotiations will be fruitful are we making preparations for any other for other actions or future endeavors general flora says um as his majesty mentioned we're expecting this to end in a mutual rejection of terms from both sides but it will be helpful for us to figure out a little bit about what they what they prioritize and what they might be prepared to give up um for future negotiations where they might be more willing to listen to us and not demand a total surrender. Okay. So the main the main goal is to try and to to establish that we are open to a conversation and to speak about to figure out what it is that they're most after. Mm. I've got a question, Your Majesty. Uh my, maybe it's a bit of a stupid question, but you know, not not a strategy guy here, just mm -hmm. I haven't figured out how to put these wings away yet, actually. Uh, so, you know, I'm just... <laughs> Your huge wings are, like, spread out the f almost the full length of the table, just kind of behind everyone. <laughs> just doing a little stretcheroo there. Finn is using one as a headrest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, no, so, and again... Just a humble pirate here, not versed with the intricacies of high court governmental politics and all that crap. But uh, if this meeting is just doubtlessly going to end in both sides going, fuck you and walking away and having another fight, why can we not just skip to having the other fight? Like, why can't we just, like, kick their absolute asses without talking about it first? And then, I mean, that will really fucking humiliate them, wouldn't you think? If we just, like, spank the shit out of them now without even engaging in the, the pleasantries, like... You see, um, a couple of other generals are, like, nodding. Like, clearly they they think that <laughs> this is the way to go. Um, King Mananon says, um, no, it is not, uh, that is a potential course of action. Um, we are taking some time to repair from the blows that we've already taken um th this of course also provides them the time to repair and regather their strength but we believe that we that we will benefit more from postponing the conflict than they will mm. a especially because it is possible that we um we might have a few more reinforcements arriving from allies of ours mm. whereas they uh, They're tapped out. Yes, yeah, so they they already they gathered their fleet before making mm. a rush on us. Um, he uh, he sort of like sees sees the expressions and the like exchange glances at reinforcements and puts up a hand and says, uh, "Any reinforcements that are coming are coming by magical means. We are too uh, surrounded mm. for anyone to get here to an advantageous position. But there are a few." Um, the communications are happening with a few of our other allies here in the Northern Sea who might be able to teleport some people in. So it benefits us to continue to postpone more than it benefits them. Your Majesty, might it benefit the negotiations to send a representative from one of the other territories Lithios has already occupied mm. in determining the course of the eventual negotiations? Um, Mananon, like, 
makes like an interested face um, at this um, and gives like a, a kind of thoughtful nod and is like, mm, explain further why? Well, I respect that currently Erebrer is a nation under siege. There are certainly other territories that have been facing this for longer and perhaps suffered equally detrimental or perhaps more impactful effects. And I feel that it would be in not only their best interest, but Erebrer's as well, to keep those needs in mind when looking at what we're asking Lithios to give up. Hmm. There's thoughtful murmurs from around the table. Um, Mononon uh, looks at you and is like, and are you, are you volunteering yourself for this task? Uh, Malika looks at Finn and Reagan. Do we want to do that? <laughs> yeah, sure. I've never been to a council before. <laughs> Actually, maybe I have. <laughs> um, well, here's the, t- technically I'm a citizen of Erebre, which is... Not right. Yeah, he. I. I want to be clear. He looked at Mal. Like this might you might do this anyway, but he's looking at Malachi, not at the other two. Um. Look, man, I'm aware of my own limitations as a person, and I don't think that that would be the best place for me to be. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. However, Finn has a lot of charisma. <laughs> uh, not necessarily myself, although if I were the only option, I'm not unwilling. All right, go ahead and go ahead and make a persuasion check for just like the original idea, not necessarily yourself, but just a representative. Oh, 24. Cool. So he uh the king is like I think you're right. I think that would be a good uh perspective to have present at the negotiation. We will see who we can find who might be able to fill that role. Um, at which point General Flora actually jumps in and goes, Actually, Your Majesty, if he's willing, I wouldn't mind having Malachi Kassir come along. Mm. Um, she kind of turns to you, Malachi, and goes, the, the skills that you showed in the battle this morning, I mean, again, we're hoping things won't devolve into battle at the table, but in case something does go wrong, it would be useful to, to have you there. And you have the right experience and perspective, assuming that's something you're comfortable with. I understand there's a um, previous connection with General Neiman as well, but if you'd like to come, I'd like to have you along. And uh, Mr. Fisher is a resident of Gillsbury, one of Lithios's own. Oh, it's true. I was recently reminded that I'm from Lithios. <laughs> <laughs> um, Malachi, make another persuasion check. That one is an 18. Okay. Um, General Flora looks at the king, and King Modanon, like, looks at Finn, um, and is like... Malachi's sweating his ass off. It's true. Um, you are... Your, your perspective may also be valuable. Um, General Flora says, as long as, it's, as long as it's understood, leave most of the actual negotiating to me. Um... Don't try to step in unless it's necessary. Don't sell any supplements. <laughs> okay. Um, if if both of you are amenable to that, then eh? I then yes, I would like to to take you along with me. Um, and she looks back to the king, kind of for his for his approval, and the king is like, "All right, Malachi Kassir and Finn Fisher will go with you tomorrow morning." And then we can bring Reagan, right? Mm. <laughs> Reagan and Railthor are like playing cards under the table. <laughs> the uh, every everyone goes mm. <laughs> and including Reagan. Mm. What what if he like waits in the hallway? Uh, He's good at sailing. The king will just sort of in, in a level tone say like, "Remember how I said that General Crevitas was being kept away from the negotiations because of his reputation as a hothead." <laughs> I think the same rule may need to apply here. Not that we don't appreciate your help, Mr. Starkweather. We thoroughly do. Um, oh, no, but... no, 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 no. You're, you're completely right. Like... Do you have a little room we can keep him in? <laughs> I think he'll be fine. <laughs> Some treats to entertain him while we're gone. Make sure to feed him three times a day. He does need enrichment. <laughs> Hopefully you won't be gone that long. <laughs> also, parenthetical... Hannah, did we figure out if my dad has his own last name? Um, he does. It's he took Starkweather. <laughs> Damn, son, that's cool. I'll use it. <laughs> Sigurson. Sigur, not Sigurd. 
Yeah, no D. Perfect. Um, actually, it's Sigerson, first of all, uh, and nah. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. Sigerson Starkweather? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, you, sure. <laughs> Railthor, like, claps a hand on your shoulder um, from where he's sitting next to you, looking like he's a little choked up, maybe. Anyways, you got any sevens? <clears throat> no fish. Malachi's peering at Reagan's father's hand. <laughs> um, the king then, like, sort of moves on from this topic and talks through, like, a few more, like, nitty-gritty details that I shan't go into because you don't really need to know, like, Actually, Hannah, the exact, I demand like, a complete and whole I know. entire war council. Listen. Yeah, let me nitty those gritties. <laughs> I think I could monologue for half an hour if I needed to, just making up things about the geography and the battle's plan off the top of my head. Um, but I won't do that. I refuse, in <laughs> fact. Not because I can't, but because I don't want to. Um, but sort of sort of explains that the the because only one tree burned, the shield should be uh, repaired by tomorrow. Um, that there are being, like, everyone is being kept very much on alert mm. in case Lithios decides to attack today um but that it is it is expected that they will wait to see what happens in the negotiations just in case uh Arabrer is feeling ready to surrender um and because again they are like pulling themselves together and repairing their ships and all of that as well as what you guys are doing um if there, if anything else comes up that we need to retroactively say mm -hmm. was discussed in the war council we can do that um but uh has the adventurer just been chilling she mostly seems to be just kind of like behaving herself as the as the war council goes on anytime that it gets like suggested like anytime that the king asks for opinions on like should we put more defenses here should we like what should we do with this unit of troops um the adventurer always comes down on the side of like pushing for more aggressive action mm. she just wants to like Anything that will cause the most damage to Lithios as possible, that's what she pushes for. I thought you were supposed to be a level-headed leader. I don't know that I ever claimed that. Um, I'm a passionate leader. Uh, I don't think I necessarily am trying to be level-headed. It's one of those things where it's always like, if you're agreeing with me, I'm going to be questioning your judgment, you know? <laughs> but uh, eventually things kind of come to an end. Um, King Mononon like pushes back from the table and stands up and says, so I suggest that all of you, especially those of you who are going to the negotiations in the morning, um, get some rest sooner rather than later so that you will be at full strength for what will likely be a very full and one way or another very decisive day tomorrow. But until then, Thank you again all for your help. Um, and I think that's where we can end our session at the end of the War boom, Council. Boom, boom, boom. Um, you guys can, you still will have like a few hours before it's time to uh, long rest. But when you do long rest, you can level up <gasps> to level 13. <gasps> wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Team Spank Lithios. Okay, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed that, which as always, we certainly hope you did, you can find us other places on the internet. We are at Ship of Fools Cast on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. You can also find us if you sail on over to patreon.com slash ship of fools, where you can support our show, show your appreciation, and get access to some of our fun bonus content, including Folio, our bonus campaign DM'd by Andy in a Shakespearean world full of magic and misfits and lots of mischief. Um, so again, that's patreon.com slash ship of fools if you are interested in that. As always, some people we need to thank. Thank you to Theo Golden for our beautiful logo art. You can find him at tgoldenart on Instagram and to Lucas Mangold for our theme music. You can contact him at lucascarlmusic at gmail.com for all of your music needs, nautical or otherwise. We will be back with the next episode of Ship of Fools on July 11th. And until then, we will see you on the open seas. Bye! <laughs>
Nurgle licks my wounds clean. Wow. I guess seagulls have tongues. Damn, we could all get power word killed right now. Maybe I should roll my last two dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have someone come in with the triple power word kill. <laughs> <laughs> Weird that birds have tongues, you know? Yeah. Tongues they can use to cast power word kill. So true. Wow. Hannah, if, if a wizard had, like, a parrot, like an African gray parrot, for example. <laughs> Do we uh -huh. think that the parrot could learn the word? <laughs> the parrot is not a wizard. Can't you can't you cast spells through your familiar though? Yeah, yeah. I dispute <laughs> the claim that a parrot is not a wizard. <laughs> 